my name is Jenny McLeese. Um, I'm a freelance writer. I was born and raised in Norfolk, Virginia, and I'm also the owner of Venn Virginia Entertainment News. Um, Venn is a website where you can come to and get upcoming information on upcoming events and things that's going on around the state of Virginia. So you can go there, you know, hang out, have fun, or whatever. I should apologize because I haven't been able to update my website lately because I have been working with some of my private clients. Um, I have been creating content for them um, to help build their websites and their businesses and stuff like that. But I promise that I will be getting back to it and I will be updating it soon. Okay, now, first of all, I would like to welcome you to the very first video segment of my blog, which is connected to my website, Vin, um, Vin's voice. Okay. Unfortunately, the subject matter is about police harassment in the city of Chesapeake. It's a personal experience. Um, I apologize because I really wish that it could have been on a more pleasant subject, but you know, it is what it is. Oh, oh yeah, if you see me looking over here periodically during the video, my laptop is here and all my notes is here. I'm trying to make sure I have everything that I need while I'm making this video. All right, first let me tell you about the area of Chesapeake that I live in. It's called the South Norfolk section of Chesapeake. On October 4th, um, Chesapeake Police Department sent a angry, belligerent, arrogant black officer named Officer Spool to my house to harass me just because I filed a complaint against the Chesapeake Police Department. I filed a complaint with a website called policeabuse.com um, just in case you may need that in the future. And I wrote a letter to Mayor Alan Krasnoff. The reason why I say that Chesapeake Police Department sent him here is because when complaints against a police department is filed, it usually goes straight to a high-ranking officer, like a lieutenant, a sergeant, or even the chief of police. Um, that's from my experience. However, the task of confronting me seems to have been passed off to a tiny little black officer. Anyway, he came up here. He was very angry and very arrogant. He seemed to have a Napoleon complex. If you're not familiar with a Napoleon complex is, uh, Wikipedia describes it as a um, theorized condition occurring in people of short stature. It is characterized by overly aggressive, domineering social behavior and carries the implication that such behavior is compensatory for the subject's stature. Okay, I filed a complaint <laughs> on October 1st because I felt like my community had been forgotten by Chesapeake Police Department. I have done my civic duty and I have reported drug activity that was happening in my area um, since 2009 and nothing has happened. I witnessed a drug transaction uh, taking place right in front of my mailbox in broad daylight. At this particular house where this happened at, um, traffic was always bad. I mean, I'm not gonna name any addresses. I'm not gonna name any people's names. If I do uh, name a name, it's a basically a fictitious name. You'll find that out later on. Anyway, like I said, um, the traffic was so bad at this house. You couldn't even get to the mailbox. The mailman couldn't even get to the mailbox to even deliver the mail. I left the neighborhood for a while. I went back to my, um, my hometown, Norfolk, and I ended up having to come back because over there, there was also some drug activity and stuff going on in that area. So I basically had to leave because my mother was staying with me at the time, and my mother, she's on oxygen, and the smells from the drugs was basically making her very ill. So 
had to pack up and move and end up leaving my apartment and coming back here um, to this house, which happens to be my great grandparents' home. I noticed that when I came back here to Chesapeake in 2015, the same people that I had turned in for drug activity were still here <laughs> in the neighborhood and they were thriving on their illegal business. The guy that I actually saw that did a transaction in front of um, in front of my mailbox, oh, he was gone. Um, he moved out, he got his home car, which was a BMW. He ended up having a baby and he got a girlfriend, he got an apartment. Never even so much as received a slap on the wrist. His brother and his sister-in-law were still back here um, doing the same thing that he was doing, doing the same drug activities and stuff that was going on. And then later on I ended up finding out that there was another house here. Okay, brace yourself for this. This guy has been here since the early 80s. I'll refer to him as Joe. He has been completely overlooked and there are some smells coming from his house that sometimes smells like it's like boiled eggs or rotten eggs or something and it's some type of strong odor that basically tickles your throat and it makes you feel sick. It was just so infuriating to see that these people are still living here in this area. And this guy, he's been here, let's just say, for three decades, a little over three decades. Okay, anyway, three days later after I filed a complaint, that's when Officer Spool shows up to my house at 7 a.m. in the morning. He was repeatedly ringing the doorbell. 7 a.m. in the morning. Mind you, my mother's here. My sister also is here. Both of them are disabled. My sister, she got hurt at work, and my mom, she's on oxygen. So he was repeatedly ringing the doorbell that time in the morning trying to disturb everybody in the house. So um, I hadn't went to bed until like, 3 a.m. So I was basically very tired. Um, I was up and I was completing um, an article for a client that had gave me a, a small workload to complete for him. So I had been up until 3 o'clock in the morning. Anyway, Officer Spool comes here ringing the doorbell like some crazy person. I didn't call for police. Nobody in my house called for police at all. He just showed up all by himself. I didn't even know that he was the one that was at the door at 7 o'clock in the morning until he told me when he showed up later on. Anyway, getting back to the story, at 9.38 a.m. that same day, I was getting, I was putting on my clothes. I was getting ready to go outside because I needed to mow the lawn. Um, my grass was getting high and you know, that causes bugs, stuff like that in your house. Anyway, I noticed that my phone is ringing. My phone was ringing twice, one behind the other. It was a City of Chesapeake number. It was Officer Spool. He had uh, rung the phone once and then he called back and left me a voicemail message. It was a little past 12.30 in the afternoon because I had done my complete uh, front yard and I was heading back there in the back and I had done more than half of the backyard and I was almost about ready to finish. And um, I took off in the house so I could get a drink of water, you know, sit down for a while, rest. All of a sudden, by the time I'm heading out of the house, I noticed that a police car is parked on my street and there's a police officer sitting in it. He was right near a neighbor's house, which happened to be the neighborhood snitch's house. We'll refer to him as Mark. So he was parked a little ways past Mark's house. Okay. He finally gets out of the car and he walks all the way to my backyard 
and he starts talking to me. He asked me, was I Jenny McLeese? And so I said yes. And then uh, he identified himself, um, but you know, I kind of misinterpret his identification as an introduction. I thought he was coming like on a friendly, non-aggressive note, but he wasn't. What I did was I had the lawnmower. I had the lawnmower and um, I wiped my hands on my pants because you know, you know, make sure there was no sweat on it. And I extended my hand to him and I, you know, tried to shake his hand since we were telling each other, each, you know, each other's names. And he looked at my hand and he was like, I'm not shaking none of your sweaty hand. I don't want your sweat on me. And then he looked me up and down just like I'm doing now. Because, <laughs> like I was yesterday's garbage. Okay, so I basically, you know, lowered my hand back down. And he started asking me about, you know, oh, did you call about some drug activity that was going on in the area? So I was like, yeah, I did. I did call in about it. And um, I start trying to explain to him what was going on. But every time I tried to explain to him what was happening, he kept saying, that doesn't mean it's drug activity. I was like, okay, um, but for your information, it is drug activity going on. But anyway, after that, um, he started sounding like a jilted boyfriend. He started asking me questions. How come you didn't answer your door? And I was like, answer my door? I'm like, I'm standing outside mowing the grass. Like, what the heck are you talking about? And he's like, um, how come you didn't answer your door? I was like, you, I was like, what? And so he was like, I'm ringing your doorbell, I'm banging on your door, which is only a half truth because he didn't bang on the door. He just repeatedly rung the doorbell. So that was only a, like a half truth. He started asking me questions about, like I was, he was basically trying to, like I was trying to avoid him or something. And I was like, why would I be avoiding him? And I'm the one that's trying to get the neighborhood cleaned out. But anyway, that's the way he took it. He took it like that, and he was like, how come you didn't answer the door? I'm like, first of all, I didn't tell him this, though. But I'm like, first of all, as an American citizen, I do not have to open the door for police. So for him to stand there and try to make it seem like I had committed some crime by doing that, it is my right. I do not have to open the door for police, nor do I have to answer any of his questions. But he came to basically ambush me, so that's what he was trying to do. And I'm, I'm standing here, I'm shocked, because I'm beginning to understand that this guy is basically upset with me because I reported crimes in my neighborhood to the Chesapeake Police Department. So anyway, and he claimed he knocked again. He had no, I don't think that he had any idea that he knew that my mom was in the house. And while he was telling me, yeah, I just went up there to your door and knocked again. Okay. And I'm like, okay. I was standing outside. Why didn't you go to the person who was standing outside? Why would you come and knock at the door? But I'm thinking he meant before I came outside. So he basically lied about that. Uh, <laughs> so, um. Anyway, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him the benefit of the doubt. If he came up here and if he pushed the doorbell, my doorbell is very old. It's the original doorbell um, that was here when my great-grandparents were here. So you base, it's basically a trick to it. That's how old it is. Anyway, you have to basically push it down in order for you know, the doorbell to ring, which he should have been experienced with anyway after ringing the doorbell 7 o'clock in the morning. My mom basically says that she didn't see him come up here to the door. She was right out here in the dining room area. She was right in the dining room area, and she never saw him or heard him come up there to the door. And I'm more inclined to believe my mother over some cop with a thug complex. So, there, yeah, there you go. Anyway, let's see what else happened. I know he stood there for a while and he was asking me a lot of questions and I'm trying to get my notes together. Um, okay, by this time, I had realized that this guy had came here 
to harass me for filing a complaint and reporting crime. So he kept asking me, so you don't answer your doors. So I just, I just said, well, I guess not. That's what I said. And then he just let out this arrogant little chuckle like, like, yeah. Um, so then he asked me, why didn't I answer the phone? So I explained that I wanted to get out here and cut my grass um, because I had a, another job to do, another article that I had to complete for a client, and I had a deadline, so I was trying to hurry up and get out there and cut my grass and, you know, come back and get there and the work, and then I would have returned a call later because I had filed a police report against somebody who was harassing me on the street, on my street. And I was trying, and I did. I thought that's who the number was. It was 382, and that's usually means somebody from the city of Chesapeake. And I said, I didn't really feel like dealing with it. Um, I was up all night. I didn't really feel like dealing with it. So anyway, I just told him, though, that I just needed to cut my grass. I mean, I was going to come back and call him back. But that answer wasn't good enough for him. So, um... Then he wanted to know why I didn't respond to the voicemail that he had left the second time that he called. <laughs> My voicemail forwards to an online service called Umail, meaning I do not get voicemails directly, nor do I get alerts letting me know that there are voicemails. The only time I know that there is a voicemail is when I log on to my Umail account and I check it. And I hadn't been online that day um, because I was trying to get outside to mow my lawn so that I could finish, so I can hurry up and get back in and finish the work that I had to do for um, my client. I didn't get a chance to explain any of that. He kept interrupting me because he had his own assumptions. I was basically just being interrogated because of an angry police officer. Um, he was upset because I reported his um, department for negligence. And so there was nothing that I could say that he would believe anyway. The conversation went on. Um, he started asking me questions about, um, he said, if I go to these people's houses, on this street, do you think that they would uh, talk to him? So I said, um, I don't think that they would talk to you. I don't think everybody would talk to him that was on the street because of the activities that they're involved in. I made a mistake about telling him about Mark the Snitch next door and Joe, the guy that had the smells coming from his house. <laughs> so yeah anyway my sister drives up in the driveway um I told him that she knows about the drug activities in the neighborhood because um she's been living here um in this house for going on 10 years so she knew about one house but she didn't know about Joe that had been here for like three decades um she didn't know about that I told him about uh that she knew and I told him how I knew about it because of a previous apartment that I was living in in Norfolk and the drug smells were um, making my mother ill so I had to give up that apartment and you know move back here to Chesapeake and he didn't want to hear about it he started telling me don't interrupt him I was like how come I'm not allowed to finish any of my sentences? How come he's asking me a bunch of questions and I'm not allowed to finish talking and saying what I need to say to answer the question? So anyway, he left and he started talking to my sister. And then after he finished talking to my sister, my sister comes in the house and she tells me, he asks her, do I have mental issues? Okay, this officer has the audacity to ask, do I have mental issues? Okay, he rings, he comes to my house when he's not even called. He rings the doorbell repeatedly, seven o'clock in the morning. He had a nerve to act like I'm the one to have mental issues. Okay, first of all, I've been a freelance writer 
for going on seven years. I have over 200 published articles where I've either ghostwritten for someone or something that's published in my name. Um, I've been published in Entertainment Magazine online twice for two interviews that I have done. Um, last year, um, I was just interviewed for a television show that was uh, basically based on an article that I had written about two brothers that were murdered um, at a restaurant in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, I was interviewed for that and I also completed research for it and he has the nerve to try to um, put my uh, sanity in question. He was just trying to establish me as a crazy person and try to discredit me. That's what he was trying to do. After he finished talking to my sister, then he goes over there to the two houses that I just told him about. Now, Joe, on the other hand, has basically hired someone to watch us, okay? This guy was literally camped outside of our house. He had a bag of clothes in his car. And I happened to see the bag of clothes one night. And the guy is sitting up in the window of the house and he see me looking in his car because he's being paid to watch our house, see what we do, just because Mark the Snitch has went over there and told Joe that I am reporting the crime in the neighborhood. I have been at the Civic League meeting reporting the crime and the mayor was there, so Mark the Snitch found out about it. And so he told Joe about it. And so Joe hired somebody to keep an eye on us. So he goes over there talking to the um, guy that Joe hired. We'll call him Tom. So he was talking to Tom for a while. Then he, I don't even think Officer Spool even knew that Tom was not the owner of the house at all. The owner was actually, who was Joe, he was actually inside of his house watching him from that little window where he has created this window that has um, an opening cut out on it so he can see the street. And his car is hid back there in the backyard. Officer Spool didn't even have a clue that the owner was still in the house and watching him. He could have shot him. So he had no idea what he was getting himself into. Um, so, um, after he comes from talking to Tom, the lookout, he goes over here um, across the street to Mark the Snitch. And of course, Mark the Snitch invites him inside his home to talk to him. Um, I have no idea what was said, but I'm pretty sure as angry and upset as Officer Spool was, I'm pretty sure he probably told more than he should have told um, because I think he wanted to cause trouble for me because I filed a complaint about the negligence of Chesapeake Police Department. This officer, Officer Spool, he was paid to serve and protect. This guy shows up on my great grandparents' soil with the sole intention of shaming me for reporting a crime that has been festering in this neighborhood due to lack of police presence. Now, I'm not sure, but I believe um, a higher ranking officer probably has sent him to the house. I don't know if that officer intended for him to do what he did but I don't know, okay? I don't know what was wrong with this guy. This guy had, a, had some serious issues. But he just came to the neighborhood. He tried to discredit me. He tried to humiliate me. And he tried to embarrass me. He even went as far as trying to make it seem as though I had mental instabilities. Just because I reported some crime that they have just overlooked over the years, probably because there's nobody down here at all. I had went to the Civic League meeting 
um, last year and there was supposed to be a police officer there named Officer Smith. Officer Smith doesn't show up all the time at a civic league meeting even though it's once a month. He does not show up all the time. So there has been like a criminal sitting down there at the civic league meeting getting information and updates to better their businesses. That's just an example of the negligence that's going on there. And I spoke with another officer. Um, his name is a Lieutenant Day. He's, um, he's an older uh, guy. He just seems like he's waiting for to retire. I had to get his email because when I called him, he wouldn't return my calls. So I had to email him and it was a Friday. And he said that he had patrolled the area and he didn't see anything at all. And that was the same day when I had collected pictures of all the traffic that was coming in and out of this um, house, the first house that I had found out about back in 2009. I had collected all of these pictures while Lieutenant Day was saying that he did not see anything. He had patrolled the area. He had other people patrolling the area. So, that was a lie, because I had the pictures to prove that was a lie. After that, I pretty much tried to leave uh, Lieutenant Day alone. I didn't contact him anymore, because I could see where this was going. So um, um, I went to a uh, meeting at the second precinct, because that's the precinct that uh, handles my area. Um, I went to one of their meetings where they have um, once a month, um, I believe, and um, Lieutenant Day was there. Um, I believe Lieutenant Day knew who I was, however, he did not try to introduce himself or shake my hand. He was basically trying to avoid me the whole time. And there was a senior uh, there, um, an African-American senior. and. He was saying that he had called the police because something was happening in the area um, that night. And Lieutenant Day made this joke about it that I didn't think was funny. And he said, yeah, I came, but I did not want to get out of my car because it was raining. And then he started to laugh. And I was looking, I was like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't see what's so funny. So this is a, an example of the type of SAP police officers that are um, in control over here in this area. Anyway, getting back to Officer Spool, um, he is a naive, uninformed police officer that came up here and tried to play detective. He doesn't even have the training to determine whether criminal activity was going on or not, okay? He is not a detective. He was just a regular officer, okay? So I think personally that Officer Spool should stick to traffic signals and leave the real crime to train professionals. That's my opinion. I've been collecting a lot of information and a lot of evidence and I have submitted it to the proper authorities. Officer Spool could have compromised all of that, may have compromised all of that. He asked me about photos, I believe. I think that's how it started. Um, this was when I was outside. Um, he asked me about some photos or something, or did I say I have some photos? I can't really remember because it was, I'm trying to keep all the details up. But, um, I said, yeah, I had photos, but I had it stored up there on my computer. I couldn't believe he thought that I was going to give him some photos. Why? So he can go around here and share information with all the people that I'm telling him is harassing me or, or the Mark the snitch over here that goes around telling everybody's business to everybody else. I mean, I wasn't gonna share any photos with him. I don't even trust him. That didn't happen. I just, I'm just so upset that this guy came in here and he ambushed me and he violated my rights, basically. 
Um, he came banging at my door seven o'clock in the morning and that is just unacceptable. That is police harassment. He's too stupid to be carrying a gun, <laughs> have a badge, and have a terrorist mentality because that's what I feel like he was, a terrorist. You know, stupidity and power is a toxic cocktail. So um, he just completely abused his undeserved position that day. And um, I reported him to his lieutenant. Um, I called I called some of everybody's office after that happened. I I went and reported him everywhere. And um, I spoke to his lieutenant. There's another officer that seems like he has a very laid back approach to everything. <laughs> and I was speaking to him, and you know he's he talks to you very calmly. You, you can't tell if he's He's really just so, he's really sorry to hear that that has happened to you or he just patronizing you to shut you up and get you off the phone. But um anyway, he claimed that he was going to keep him out of the area um after that little incident that he pulled. But I really don't know if I trust that, so I still keep my eyes open. I mean, now I have a, a belligerent cop out here that's upset with me because I reported crime and I think he's even more upset because I knew more about what was going on and he's walking around with a badge and he didn't know anything so yeah and about him coming to my house 7 a.m. in the morning um like I had said earlier before I don't think that he knew that <laughs> there was other people here so I don't know if he was trying to force his way into the house to legally search it for only God knows what. And I don't know because I also heard stories about police officers trying to, you know, planning evidence um, on people. So I'm so glad that <laughs> no one in my house was up at that time and so we didn't have to worry about that. The entire encounter like shook me to the core. Um, Spool was literally sitting down the street a little past Mark the Snitch's house, okay? He was watching me like I was the criminal, okay? <laughs> you know, you just hear all of these stories on um on the news and online about people getting shot down by the police and they're not being held accountable for it i like i said the incident just shook me to the core i i mean knowing that the law enforcement is out here has an attitude with me for reporting a crime and i have criminals on the street that's upset with me for reporting the crimes so who do i have to run to for protection, nobody actually. I'm not really trusting this police department at all. Um, you know what? But you know, if they applied, you know, that kind of initiative toward a criminal that was on my block, like he did, sitting down the street watching me, you know, maybe they wouldn't have been here this long. Okay, <laughs> just saying, and. You know, some of the officers of the second precinct are acting like the thought of crime in South Norfolk is so unbelievable. Okay? It has a crime rate that is 41% higher than the national average. You know, perhaps if Officer Spool had taken some of that aggression out on that 41%, you know, instead of harassing innocent citizens. That's what he should have did. It's just nerve-wracking to know that you basically got punished for reporting crime. They should have been patrolling the area. They lied and tried out like they were patrolling the area, but no one wasn't, because um, even after I went to the Civic League meeting, 
and it was one time there the police officer officer Smith he decided to show up um, I told him about it he was supposed to been collecting some photos from me um, he never got back in touch with me but he told everybody that I never got back in touch with him he told me he was gonna call me back he never did but when the time when it was time for him to tell a story he said I never contacted him so you know you just leave it alone since they basically have the badge and the license to kill so you just basically leave it alone but um I I did take any um all evidence and all information that I had and went to the proper authorities um to try to seek some help so I'm hoping that would help me I just thought that maybe I should share this experience um and like I said it was a very horrifying experience and I'm hoping nothing like that ever happens again. I'm just putting everyone on notice because I know there's a lot of other people here in Chesapeake but you need to be careful of this guy Officer Spool because he is he is aggressive, he is a jerk, he's arrogant and I think he really danced to, dances to his own beat because um, when I finally did get a chance to listen to the voicemail that he left me, he was so polite in the voicemail. Um, he was calling me ma'am. He was telling me to have a good day, return his phone call, but he never mentioned one time that he came up here to my house at 7 a.m. in the morning. He just conveniently left that part out. I guess because he know the phone calls at the police department are being recorded. So he tried to pretend like he was being polite to make it seem like, you know, he's a, he's a good officer. And they had, I don't know if they had any idea. Once he did that, um, that little phone call, you know, so he can say, oh, it's her, her words against mine. So that's what he was trying to do. He was being sneaky about the whole thing. And I don't know which uh, officer, higher ranking officer, sent this uh, naive, uninformed amateur up here. But um, I'm hoping that um, his lieutenant supervisor keeps his promise and keeps him out of my neighborhood. You know, because I have enough problems here as it is. Thank you for watching.